So I just want to take you through the thought process of making a boat model. Here I'll always start with a cube. Now, in my head I'm thinking, where are the breakpoints? I know that I'll probably have, there's, there's obviously a um, shape here that's close to square at the back that's angled out. So I know that I'll place one of my pieces here and the back will go angled somewhat like this. That's for a very basic shape. Now at the other places, I have to find where there are elements in the boat that suggest that I need to add corners. Right now, this is a good one. I probably also will have one down here, I would imagine. However, I'm not sure that I want to make such a deep dive because the shape here has to be uh, smaller towards the bottom and you can see how that would probably cause some control issues. So we're going to start by modeling the top part first. And what that means is that I'll use this as a guide. It seems like I would probably need, I don't know, maybe a corner around here and then a corner around there. So what we'll do here is select this, shift, shift D for duplicate, and you can see my con commands in the bottom. And then going along the x-axis, hit 7, and then rotate along the y-axis at 90 degrees. Okay, and now we have our exact same image. I'll place it roughly along the center. Then we should be able to see about what we're working on here. Um, of course, assuming that the images match precisely, which they will not necessarily. <laughs> so uh, let's scale on the x-axis. I think that this is the back. Yeah, that's the top of the back. And then I'm assuming the bottom is going less wide, so I'm going to do scale x like that. And now I'm going to scale x this way. It's probably easier to imagine what the boat looks like. So if I hit uh, y and control how wide I go, and then extrude on the y-axis again. This part is roughly straight, so I'm leaving it that way. And then we have a curve. So I'm following, there's a little line that appeared there. I don't know what it is, but it tells me I can probably place something along that way and then hit Y again, place something here. Um, I'm going to add a few more vertices at the bow because I know that when there are curves, whenever there are curves, you always need more vertices to kind of help in that respect. Okay, so let's go along the edge. And not surprisingly, our work doesn't look great. When I scale, I have to scale only on the x-axis. So I'm going, just going to fix that in a moment. Probably I can go a little further out and um, scale it along the edges of my trimming. Okay. So if I hit 3, I'm going to come in this view. Now, of course, everything changes in this perspective, but I just want to make sure that my shape follows the top edge at least as a minimum. Um, obviously there's a shape here I don't want to care about yet. I don't want to get lost in the details right now, I just want to get the main shape down. Here, in an ideal world we'd be keeping everything horizontal, but I know that won't happen. So I'm going to make sh take advantage of that fact and make sure that I'm following the edges in a somewhat pretty fied curve. Now here, let me just seal by hitting F. That closes the gap. And I know if I do scale X, um, the boat will start looking roughly like this. Now this is hard to evaluate because at the bottom we don't have any, um, any, uh, any vertices yet. So before we get too far, let's just make sure that we are not duplicating our work. So let's do a control R, loop cut, and there we go. Let's go in wireframe view. We're going to delete everything to the left, typically, by deleting the vertices. And what you want is having the center of the object there. You see there's still one here, so I'm going to delete that. And then what we'll do is add the modifier, which is the mirror. There you go. Now we have a ship. So let's continue doing the bottom side. This shouldn't be too difficult. As I gather, the ends here. 
is going to hit E to extrude. This is a nice edge, so let's just move this. And now you can start seeing um, my mirror modifier do want to enable clipping. So now you can see that this would obviously be a lot slimmer, probably be something like this at the risk of destroying our geometry. <laughs> and um, the bottom of this will be a lot slimmer all along the edge. So let's grab this and move it in. Don't want to move it completely in I, because I don't want to merge those vertices together. And we'll probably come along and thin this a bit more later on. For right now, what's important is just to follow the edge as usual. And I'm deciding to follow the, probably the inside edge. So what I can do here is modify my approach a little bit and add another extrusion. I can hit GG if I want to go along this line. I can probably move to here. Now it looks like there's an, uh, you know, a hard edge and hard edge is inside uh, modeling in Blender. Need to be done slightly differently. Okay. Now we should be having the main shape of a boat. So you can see that we it didn't take us very long. Let's just add the subsurf modifier and that's where the magic happens. So we'll go in subdivision surface and uh, move the view and render levels up. Control click along the edges that I know I want to be sharp and then we'll do shift T. Keep those sharp. Here at the back, I probably want this to be sharp as well. Let's just go in edge selection mode and select E. You can see exactly the shape we want. And then at the back, we have the space here. So I'm going to need to go in wireframe view to avoid seeing the extras. Yep, here we are. And this is a timber that would be placed across the bottom. So I'm assuming all of this is flat. Uh, so you notice I just need to do control click and that takes care of selecting everything. So do shift T. Okay. And now we have the approximate shape of our boat. We might want to refine here because uh, the problem we have here, I believe is due to the geometry. Um, if I just hide this subdivision for a moment, yeah. We have a couple of triangles coming together here. You'll see as we start hardening edges, they don't need to be 100% hardened, but they will bring the, uh, the whole shape together. So here you can see that as I harden this edge, um, yeah, the loops cause fewer problems. And in fact, I think it's quite uh, natural that there's a pleat at that space, but I, I would have to reference images on the on the real blue nose to see the the real effect. Now let's just work on the front for a moment. So if I go in this view, I can see that, um, well, first of all, this is not correct. And now that we have our subdivision modifier, we can see the line that the subsurf creates. So in a better position now to start adding the detail. At the point where the curve goes the deepest is where I want my vertex. And um, I would adjust it to where it's most accurate. This is something that you wouldn't be able to do necessarily in uh, real life adjusting these vertices, but you can be very, very, very precise inside of a model. Okay, so now what we'll do, and I don't know how well this will work at the moment, but um, what we we'll want to do is extrude. And here you have it. So now we have um, an extra extrusion. It's going to be the, uh, the keel. And this time, I'll just be able to go in and readjust kind of the whole scenario so that everything lines up perfectly. And of course, it's one of these cases where you could end up using a couple of passes to make sure that, um, that everything is okay. I'm comparing this line to this line. And um, as this bit is extruded too far, then it kind of offsets my actual work. So I have to be careful to that. And here the top, if I want them to be straight, I'll just 
make everything a hard edge. And there you have it. That will give you a rough idea of how I would model a boat. And in this particular case, it'd be a sailboat. And from now on, it's uh, pretty much all adjustment. It's nothing very uh, complicated, but it's definitely something that you have to get used to doing because at first, your brain is not used to seeing the possibilities of where you could break up a model. Um, here, for instance, I would need to add probably another vertex. I'll, I'll avoid doing it right now because that'd be adding a detail. But in the future, if you want to make it more accurate, indeed, you would be able to go here and add that. And the same thing here, I would, um, I don't know the solution, but I would go play with this until it looks a lot better. And in fact, one of the things we might be missing in our recipe is there's really not much geometry at the top here. So I could start adding geometry here with the loop cut, and then I'd be able to more carefully finesse where every single edge goes, and that'll make a shape that's more pleasing, because as you can see right now, we're going um, quite wide in some areas, and it, probably, since we we're talking about the keel, this spot here is in fact a lot less wide than, than the area at the top, and this would follow a curve that goes outwards, we could do that more accurately by, you know, comparing from the front view to pressing one and uh, getting an image that lets us see the front and back view will allow us to place this curve beautifully along where it goes. In any case, this is roughly what our sailboat would look like. And then if we wanted, we would go inside our um, vertex groups, hit, hit normals, auto smooth, and then we do smooth. And there you have it. There you have a perfectly beautiful sailboat and you can add all the details and you have the hull already set up for you.